Um, I um, as an aside, Georgetown coolness aside, not that we aren't super cool. Um, I had a big milestone moment this morning that I have to share. Yeah. My kids are finally old enough that I finished the milk for my coffee and thought nothing of leaving those fuckers without milk, and it was phenomenal. <laughs> well, is, is milk even, like, something that's healthy for kids still? Do we still think that? I don't know. I teach classes to kids online, and one of them told me that, like, they're not allowed to drink milk because it's bad for them, and I think it was, like, the hormone issue, and then another one said they just can't, they can't, they have to drink whole milk because mom says that in skim milk, they remove the fat and put in sugar. And I don't, I don't, I don't know, but does it matter? It's 2020. Like we're dying anyway. Um, yeah. We're, I mean, that's not what's going to get us, but uh, I do feel that the, uh, the science on milk has, has come around as, as it was explained to me. Uh, cow milk is basically like, just like growth fuel to turn oh. calves into cows. Oh. Uh, yeah. So that, you know, that's kind of like the purpose of it. And, the idea that humans need it is uh is odd but uh i i drink mostly almond milk and that's because uh, your wife's a nutritionist yeah so you know i trust her she could be full of shit for all i know she, but, i think uh, most of them are to be honest but yeah. i just i just do as i'm told you know i know and they say weird things like um eat fewer calories i don't that's uh, <laughs> that shit is I, for me <laughs> It's always like they they found new ways to say it now instead of calories it's like oh you need to cut out processed food and sugar right and uh but then also you need to find joy in mm -hmm. your meals which mm -hmm. is i don't know i'm kind of figuring it out i don't find joy in anything oh you know the only thing i did find you uh, of you online speaking of finding joy um because before i hit record i was teasing joe about him being like an enigma ghost mythical creature um also mythical but it's like a georgetown minotaur kind of thing where you're like <laughs> half um half government you know dork and then half um badass um performer which we somehow produced a lot of it makes no sense um i know it's crazy how pissed were your parents wait how pissed were my parents when <laughs> Paying for a Georgetown education, and you're like, you know what I'm gonna do with this? Oh, um, <laughs> it's actually funny because uh, you know they they've been very supportive. Um, I have to say, at uh, at one point, um, I believe one of my family members asked him, like, oh, like you send him to Georgetown, and he's like doing comedy, and you know they were more offended by being asked that question than <laughs> by uh, what I've done. But uh, I used to have a joke actually. Uh, that I did about how, like, uh, you know, I, I've been disappointing my parents, you know, for so long, you know, like, uh, I, I went to Georgetown, and then I started, you know, working in bars, you know, and, and so basically, it was like, I, I started working in bars, and I'm like, but we sent you to this great school, and I'm like, yeah, that was fun, too, um, right. you know, and then I started doing comedy, and they were like, but you're not even funny, uh, so... <laughs> They, they didn't actually say they that. They don't really say it. that. No, no, no. Yeah. I know. Like I said, I stalked you. They're the cute. They're ideal. This is like the perfect. They're, I'm very yeah. fortunate. They're very, they're very good parents. I, uh, very I lucky. Yeah. Um, but have they seen you get spanked? Have they, uh, were they, oh, so you saw the, uh, was, was that yeah. from Tater Payne? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what video is floating? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know you, you you do a good job stalking because I'm not even I remember that happening um but I don't uh I yeah think seen the video I mean I don't believe I, they've seen that I, it was desperate yeah it's pretty cute and um the only the thing that reminded me was they um for some reason the guy was calling you fat boy but you're not fat nor were you then and so that I was a little confused by but I was also distracted by the whip so I was um, yeah that was uh, an interesting night it was actually it's a comedy show that uh, a friend of mine, uh, Jay Nog, uh, puts on, or used to put on at least, and it's called uh, Tater Pain. And basically what they do is they have comics perform, and then the audience gets to decide, should they be paid for their set? Uh, in which case they'll get like a, you know, like a $20 spot pay, as it's nice. called, or should they get pain? In which case a dominatrix will punish them in some way. So you were uh, not funny, is that what we're saying? <laughs> no, actually, no, I crushed. Uh, the judges loved me. The crowd loved me. Uh, so I got paid. And then Jay was like, well, you know, do you, do you want the pain too? 
And I was like, you know what? I'm a good you gotta sport. Say yes. It's like, like yeah, yeah, what am I going to do? I'm like, not here to, you know, ruin your show. Uh, so I, I did. The only thing I was worried about, they had this one thing called a, a violet wand. Have you ever heard of this? And there's no reason you would have. No. But now so, I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a violet wand is basically like this prod that it's basically like a low level cattle prod. And they gotcha. will like zap people. Like I'm there, like testicles and shit. I, it's a very edgy show. Um, so <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that that's the one video of me that's out there. And that's uh, maybe I do need to revisit my internet presence. No way. Did you get testicle pro <laughs> testicle prod zapped? Uh, not on the show. Oh, okay, fine, fine. That <laughs> personal life is yours, you know. Um, yeah, I found that. I found a super awkward interview that you and your Polar opposite co um, Fairfield Comedy Club um, owner, oh, Beecher. manager. Yeah. The yeah, two of, Beecher. The two of you watching, the two of you is like, I was like, it's like, are you both in the same room, planet? Like, it's, it must make it a phenomenal chemistry of like, of running this show, but like watching this awkward local, your awkward local news lady, apologies. At least she's attractive. Oh. Ours are ugly in Long Island. I don't know why. Just, <laughs> um, but it really bothers me. Um, but watching her interview the two of you about your first anniversary of the Fairfield Comedy Club, um, yeah. I was watching it painfully. I was like, this is weird. Like this is like the two of you, I don't... You're a weird, weird, different combination, and it must be fantastic to listen to you guys. Um, don't put jokes; no, up, just put conversations of the two of you up, and I will watch for days. It's always uh, it's always awkward with the two of us. No, uh, Beecher <laughs> is uh, he's he's uh, definitely you know we're different we're different comics or different people, but we we actually went to high school together, uh, and we started wow. the club together, and, and he's a great partner. So he and I, you know, we started the club basically to have somewhere to perform. Uh, outside of New York uh, when I moved to Connecticut and uh, yeah we've, we've been fortunate I have another news spot uh, that hopefully you'll find less awkward probably because feature wasn't part of it so I'll send that over to you okay, and uh, good. hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll make up for that one I like I, 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 I like the beaker thing you have to understand like so it's to our you know four listeners that's my joke um uh uh, Joe is like, um, well, every time I've spoken to Joe, he's been in a collared shirt. Um, and um, uh, like. He sure wears collared shirts. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, whatever. Hold on. Joe's like, Joe's like good looking, conservative, glasses. Uh, he's like, I am not conservative. <laughs> okay, but he. Hold on. I didn't say crazy. I said like. He's is there a difference to, anymore? Is there a difference? I don't know what there is anymore, honestly. <laughs> um, I, so gotta like, be careful. Gotta be careful with that C word, Lindsay. I know. We could. It's probably less offensive to say cunt than it is to yeah, say. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. You has can, anyone coined the term conservative? Is that something? No. That exists, but why don't but you should, post right? something, Joe? Why yeah, don't you post, post something? I should post conservative. I think conservative that would be trademark it. I get half the credit though. This, um, is, this is how I'm going to break into online content just by posting the word conservative. This will this will be great for my political career. It works. As well. Oh my God! Are we also <laughs> having a political career? Uh, no, I'm, I'm on the town council and uh, that's the extent of my political aspirations. <laughs> Georgetown boy. Um, I know. <laughs> right. So, um, you, so you just described everything because you said this will be great for my political career, career as does every, so that's Joe. And then Beecher is very tall. I want to say he's like taller than six feet. Um, I have no frame of reference because I've been watching the Michael Jordan documentary series on Netflix. So I've lost all frame of reference for height um, because- I think, yeah, I think he's probably right, I guess right around six feet, maybe a little taller. I, everybody's tall to me. Um, George yeah, Tomboy, yeah, I understand. He's, um, uh, <laughs> he's, he's definitely, he's a physical specimen. He is, uh, I think he's tall and he's got just the best hair. The in best the game. hair. He's got yeah. long, like curly hair. Right and um, very good looking, um, but totally different. Like uh, uh, it looks like it's a nineteen nineties like Arnold Schwarzenegger esque comedy of sorts. Like. Yeah, if you see Beecher, you don't forget it. <laughs> like no. you will, yeah. and if you like, he gets spotted, you know, around Connecticut because 
you know, people know him now from the comedy club uh, and from our wonderful news appearance. So people will like see him. Some people actually dresses him for Halloween. Uh, Shut he's up. Like a really? Local Halloween costume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your tent must be smaller than mine. Um, and we are small. It's it's not even within our town. It's like just within Southern Connecticut. People do it. Uh, he's a uh, he's a hero. He's a hero. I would love to meet him one day, um, or speak to him. You should do the hookup. Um, yeah, no, definitely. And so, you should come to uh, Fairfield to catch a show sometime. We're not. I far. totally will. I've only left Hop my that house. Ferry. Yeah, I've only left my house four times since March. So really uh, that's yeah, not a lot twice for eyebrows because that's a thing um and then um what was the oh once for the liquor store and then i discovered drizzly big fan they deliver oh drizzly i haven't heard of that they'll just bring you booze mm-hmm. i mean you have to pay for it but yes um what a, what a great business model not, trust me it's an app it's great um <laughs> and then the fourth time my husband forced us to because he realized that i had become somewhat like agoraphobic like we go for bike rides we have a pool um you know but like uh going to stores i'm afraid if i I will go the wrong way in a supermarket and kill everyone (laughs) yeah i uh when people are being like you know i don't even call it overly cautious but i'm somewhat cautious but i'm still going out we're you know having dinner outdoors and whatnot um you know i saw someone like wearing a mask in their car like, why would they do that? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not going to hold it against anyone to be like overly cautious about this. You don't know what people are dealing with in their health. You know, we don't know. We still don't understand like the full, you know, effects of, you know, this disease. So, so it, it makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, the masks in the car thing was one of the first thing that scares me, that scared me. Um, just because I was like, what the fuck? Like we were on a bike ride. I was on a bike ride with my kids. Um uh and all proper parenting has gone out the door during the pandemic like my my daughter now will yell the word bitch at my son and i'm like do i tell her like eh, fuck it no and like the other day she just turns to me casually she goes do i know every curse word i was like no you do not <laughs> well which ones don't i know i was like that no. that would be a great podcast actually you just teaching her every curse word you could start um, with conservative conservative totally <laughs> um seriously that is going in your intro i'm sorry but um, <laughs> oh great <laughs> why it'll make people listen maybe um <laughs> we'll take what we can get yeah um when my son was like six or seven we had um th- several things happened at once one is um uh he came home he we discovered he discovered the n word not used it but while watching um so you think you could dance um because at a certain point i decided it was time for a reality show because i cannot handle any more children's shows mm-hmm. um the pandemic has been all about the flash which was fine oh. i fi- they finally convinced me they finally explained like i finally understood what a multiverse is cool um and um <laughs> It helped because now I know we're living in a multiverse. So somewhere there's another 2020 and everything's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We just need to find, you know, a warp zone to that other multiverse. Exactly. I knew you'd get that. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a big comic nerd. Yeah. So. Uh, so are we. But Marvel all the way. Not DC. Oh, I love Marvel. I, I love Marvel and DC. I actually, I went to the comic book store yesterday. I go every Wednesday and, you know, pick up books. And I pretend it's because I want to support local business. But it's because in actuality, I'm just like a 13-year-old. You guys, I have to tell you the saddest part about this. Joe's wife is super hot. Like I looked her up. She's super hot. It's um, a, yep. She's really, uh, she's really made some poor choices. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, did you roofie her in call? I know. I'm just kidding. Just still, just daily. Uh, yeah. She's, no, she's really beautiful. And um, I, I actually love the comic book world and that I've been sucked into it by my children and family. Um, but we, um, uh, so anyway, so this boy talked about being called the N-word and then that night, and like my children asked me and so I had a conversation and then that night as I was putting him to bed, the subject of bad words came up and my son is such like an intellectual, I taught him to roller skate by explaining that he needed to lower his center of gravity. 
Like I taught, you know, like he, the intellectual in him was very confused and we started discussing other words and, um, the word asshole came up and he's like, but that's a compound word. And I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Like, don't know where that gets us. Not gonna, not gonna give you any street cred, but yes. It is. At, at what age does uh, just talking about different swear words become part of like parenting? Good parents don't talk about them. For me, when you bring in the subject to me, it's time to talk about it. Um, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I, I disagree with that. I, people who swear are usually smarter. At least that's, uh, that is you know, science. what people who swear like to say. It is science. <laughs> um, my, um, uh, I, there, I, I guess there's some evidence to it. I know a lot of people that like to believe that. Um, and I'm fine with that. Um, but for me, it's like, if you bring it to me, you have a question when, um, they were really young. I was like, I'm not going to call a penis a pee pee because that's ridiculous. And why do you, you're going to sound like an asshole, like, you know, uh, or yeah. I'm going to look like an asshole, so compound word. Um, but so uh, my, one of my husband's family members was like, oof, I would think it was really bad if like I heard a kid, he's a teacher, if I heard a kid running around the schoolyard, you know, saying penis. I was like, really? I was like, first of all, they shouldn't be saying that anyway. Uh, and second of all, I don't think penis is better than pee pee. Like, testicles was a, a tough one though because no one calls them testicles. So, um, yeah. But it's good to know the scientific terms. Actually, that reminds me of uh, some Georgetown times. We used to play a game at the tombs called the penis game. Have you ever played that? No, I mean, probably not in the way that you're talking about it. <laughs> No, it's not as creepy or disgusting as it sounds, but basically we'd be sitting at, you know, one of these big tables of the tombs, which is, uh, you know, on Georgetown folks, I think the best bar in the world. Um, so do I. I. It would. probably is not, like, but, yeah. So I don't know. I've been to a lot of bars. Oh, true, still, true. Right. Yeah, I've, I've done a lot. But uh, we, we used to, you know, sit at one of the big tables of the tomb, and we'd go around, and each person would have to say the word penis, but you always had to say it at a louder decibel than the person before you. So I have kept never... going around until the whole table is shouting penis and just seeing like what reactions you get. Uh, we were probably drunk. We were uh, definitely drunk. Got you. Um, I'm, you know, it's after it's a real fun game. Real I know after game. this, I'm going to stalk your page to see if we have any mutual friends in common um, and to see who the fuck you were playing this game with. Cause like, I'll, I... I'll tell you offline. who. Okay. Who sounds good. <laughs> um, uh, so you moved from New York to Connecticut because it's like the law when we hit a certain age. You have to move to either Long Island, um, uh, Fancy Pants Brooklyn place, but you can only do that if you're super cool and they're super gay, or I guess or just super rich or super <laughs> rich, right? Um, but I, I, I felt like oh, that was yeah. Um, or you have to move to Long Island. So we moved to Long Island. I assume that you moved to Connecticut because they literally like ID you and kick you out at some point. I Manhattan. Yeah, we uh, we had put in uh, a, over a decade each in, in New York and, you know, we're just kind of like getting to the point, you get to a point in New York where you get to an age and you're not going out as much. And when you're not going out in New York, you're just spending a lot of money to live in a tiny box. Yeah. So if you're spending more of your time out than in, living in New York makes sense. When you're now spending tons of rent and you're like, I just want to stay home. And you're like, but home sucks. Yeah, uh, you know you have to you have to make a change. So we we moved to Connecticut. I had grown up here, and uh, it's also not too far from uh, Karina's parents who live in White Plains. So yeah, we we moved out here four years ago. And honestly, like before we decided to, I didn't want to go. I was like, I'm not leaving New York. I love New York. And then like we decided to go. And then as soon as like we decided to go, I was like, yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like ready. And you know, it's there's ups and downs. There's things I you know, like about being in Connecticut. And there's things that I, you know, really miss about New York. Um, and I, I would definitely love to move back there at some point. But uh, that's probably decades away at this point. I miss the bodega. I miss the fact that at a certain time, no one will, will deliver food. Like, and that time is often like nine. Like, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Like, you know. Uh, I actually, uh, do you know the uh, comedian Michael Ian Black? Yes. I mean, the yeah, name would, sounds familiar, yeah. You would definitely recognize him if you saw him. Um, he was in, like, uh, Red Hot American Summer and, and all sorts of stuff. He's 
fantastic, you know, sketch actor and also stand up. And I saw him perform once. Actually, it was at uh, Mike Birbiglia's first uh, book release comedy show. Okay. And uh, Mike William Black was performing and he had moved to Connecticut and he was talking about Connecticut. And he's like, he's like, you know, uh, people in New York, they're like, oh, you know, you're going to move to Connecticut. Like, why? You know, in New York, you can get any kind of food any time of night, three in the morning, you want Indian food, you can get it. And he goes, do you know why you want food at three <laughs> in the morning? He's like, because you're on drugs. Yeah, that's this is true. <laughs> and uh, he, d- he did this whole great bit. He's like, you know what I do when I want food in the morning? He's like, I get up, get out of my king sized bed. <laughs> like, I walk downstairs. I open my full size refrigerator. I take out a snack. I walk outside onto my deck and then I look up and you know what I see stars <laughs> <laughs> and it was I uh like I, I only saw him perform that bit once and I still feel like I have it memorized word for word because it was like that's it's very great. funny it's so true well it's very true though I mean I um yeah I'm I mean the things that I miss I wouldn't miss now I don't think so um the only thing is um, my town is South Shore of Long Island and we're kind of entitled, a lot of entitled white Jews. And yet we still find things to fight about amongst ourselves. And then our Facebook page, the best part about it is like every so often someone posts a reminder to lock their, like, don't forget to lock your cars. Mine was broken into last night. No, yeah, it wasn't. You didn't lock it. It wasn't broken into. Like someone just opened it. Yeah, and like someone was like, "Yeah, I had five hundred dollars in cash stolen out of my." So lock your door. Like that's you know, um, but we don't cash in their car. Yeah, five hundred dollars cash in a white envelope. Okay, so someone here is selling all the drugs. Also a drug dealer. I know. I know. I know. I want to make friends with them. Um, but um, but I've I've already mocked all of them for their door thing. So do you follow kind of your local town Facebook pages? One hundred percent. Is it awful? Do you hate it? Because like I can't. My town, I hate it. I'm like I don't want to know what the loudest, stupidest people in my. I do. I love I, them. They're so. Oh really? Oh, it's so funny. Also, they're mean. They created this group called um, on Facebook called um, uh, Five Towns. I drive and park like an asshole, and they take pictures of people who do bad parking and post and they post the p- car parking on it. But sometimes. What a fucking life. I know, but sometimes it's like. Um, Sometimes it's like you can see a totally empty parking lot and then like this one car is like not parked, is like parked over the lines and someone takes a picture and I'm like, fuck off, like leave them alone. There's no one there, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it brings out the worst in people, particularly for some reason on these like local pages. And I'm like, I like my town better if I'm like just seeing people out and having the conversations I have and not paying attention to you know, whatever the dumbest, most racist person in my town. You thinks. need to know these things though. I, I know they're there. And I've got, you know, like being on like town council, like, you know, other people on the town council and that are involved, like, you know, pay attention to this stuff and think it's the most important thing. So I, I always get, you know, I hear what's going on, but it's not valuable information because they're all psychos. Right. So pre pandemic, I was specializing a lot in suicidal teens. And so I needed some levity. And so I, I think, your levi- <laughs> yeah, and I this needed- would only be levity to someone who specializes in suicidal uh-huh. things. This would not be levity for anyone else. <laughs> uh-huh. And I like needed to know. And then I, I went so far as like, we all know who the craziest person in town is because can't type, can't spell, says crazy, bizarre, offensive things. And then occasionally his wife censors him and um, we can tell when it's her writing and when it's him. And so like he blocked me. I don't even remember what the fuck he blocked me over. So I created a fake account so I can still see the crazy shit that he writes because it's so off the wall. I'm sorry. (laughs) If you created a fake Facebook account to follow some stupid idiot who blocked you. Uh, you might also be the crazy person right. on Facebook. So I'm not following him. I'm just in the same groups. So when one of my friends calls me up and goes, you got to see what he wrote. Now I, you have a way to do it. Yeah. And by the way, um, you'll 
um, appreciate it. Um, the name that I use is uh, Wonder Woman's, um, the actress who played Wonder Woman in um, like, uh, in the initial original series. Oh, is it like Linda Carter, maybe? That's it, baby. Now I got to change it. Thanks for nothing. Um, but uh, <laughs> whatever. I mean, yeah. I'm sure anyone could have pieced it together. I'm not the only one who knew. I that. know, I know. Um, but I, well, I, you know, in order to set up a fake account, you also have to friend some people in the group because that's how groups approve you. Yeah. Um, and Facebook groups have gotten out of control crazy um yeah you're avoiding social media i noticed i um i've been trying to i instagram i like to use somewhat because it's not as negative facebook i'm i'm like pretty close to just getting completely off it uh because i find it to be just a shitty place uh i use it to promote comedy and yeah. that's about it well, that's and the thing. yeah you know so i and then i don't know i get people facebook message me and i just don't want to be bothered with like another place where people are reaching out to me like you know so, which is by um, the way how we connected so thanks Joe. i know well no i mean this, <laughs> this was obviously like the one you know this this is the last time um so uh yeah i don't know it's just I, I don't i don't love it um i i'm starting my own social media platform too so it's, it's time to are you gonna do you have to do dances in it um no no you don't have you can you know but no, no, uh no. I, i'm just curious like i'm not gonna do snapchat is anything that it, snapchat just sounds like an evil villain you know like where everything disappears and like no um i'm old i need to see what i wrote to you or i won't remember you know? <laughs> yeah. i yeah i also don't like the fact that people can like delete stuff i think like if you're gonna post something like you need to be able to like stand by that you know and i, I feel like the deleting aspect gives people too much freedom to say stupid shit and then try to like, you know, erase their history of awfulness later. Right, but when they don't, you know how stupid they are. At least there's a, a thought process in it. But I would say just like be smart at the start, right? Just like don't post anything that's gonna, you know, potentially embarrass you later. It Joe, when, that hard. when you run for office of some sort, like the next office you run for, because you will, I think you should use the be smart at the start. As your slogan. Be smart at the start. Okay, I I was gonna go with conservative, but that works too. Um, I th I think it's a great um slogan. Um, uh, yeah, I I I sort of became super uber involved in all of the social media platforms when I thought I had a book coming out. Um, you know, and then the pandemic said no, bitch. Um, yeah. and then it was really sad. And I'm still crying about it sometimes. Um, but um, you did something wonderful before the pandemic. How did you get this idea for... Um, okay, so the idea for a comedy club is great, but it's this specific location and, and how that came about that I'm super curious about. Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, it, it was a combination of uh, just having to do something and then getting very lucky. But, you know, when I moved to... Connecticut, like the one big thing that I was concerned about uh, was comedy because in New York, it's very easy to perform. There's tons of clubs and bar shows. Uh, so there was stage time. And I'm like, I'm moving to Connecticut. Like, I'm not going to be able to get on stage, you know, three to seven times per week like I, you know, might normally. So how am I going to continue to develop as a comic? And one of the things I always did in New York was I always ran my own shows because when you're starting as a comic, you need stage time. But no one's going to book you because you suck. So you need to create the stage, put yourself on it, and then you have more opportunities. So um, my thinking was, all right, I'm moving to Connecticut. I need to start a show. So uh, I was lucky that in a few ways, there's this uh, hotel, the Circle Hotel in Fairfield, Connecticut, and it's owned by uh, one of my uh, old friends and classmates from high school and, and grade school. And we'd actually done a show there once as like a uh, high school alumni show. I went to this uh, school, Fairfield Prep, and we had like, you know, five or six comics from, from Prep who performed as an alumni show there. So when I was looking for a space, he's like, oh, well, why don't you just like use our lobby? So we started going into his lobby every Saturday night. We'd take out all of his lobby furniture. We'd put up a stage. We'd put up folding chairs. We'd put up our PA system. And we'd, you know, do a comedy show. And the first month, we'd, we were doing one show a night, and we sold out every show. And then we started doing two shows on Saturday and then we started doing Friday and Saturday. Um, and, you know, we're, we're getting great comics. Uh, Beecher, who you know of, is one of my partners. Another one is Emilio Savone, 
uh, who is the owner of New York Comedy Club and also went to the same high school as myself, Beecher, uh, and Ed, my friend who owns the hotel. So Emilio was, you know, booking and we were getting great talent. Um, you know, we've had Mike Cannon, who I know you know, uh, a number of times. We were lucky enough to get, you know, Pete Davidson in our first month. You know, so he we, is just- hysterical. I mean, I know, I know, but like, I, I watched his special that whatever, he's hysterical. Yeah. Yeah. So we were just, you know, we we're getting great comics and we had a really good vibe. The room, I, I joke that it feels like a, uh, a low class wedding because you're in this like hotel lobby with these cheap white plastic folding chairs and you have to bring your own booze in. Um, but for some reason it just works. It's just a really good room for comedy. How, um, how do you, so let's say there's guests in the hotel. Do they get in for free? How do you charge? Do you make any money? Yeah, we, uh, so, you know, we sell our tickets on a website. We give discounts to guests in the hotel. Uh, you know, and it's always been like a cheap night out, like our, you know, our normal ticket price is like $25 a ticket. And because we're not doing a two drink minimum or anything, you know, you can go out and for 30 bucks, have a good, good little time. Right. Um, so yeah, so we, we discount for guests at the hotel, although frequently they will, guests will complain because they're like, I heard swearing. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I would be the guest that like stood in the, like peering out the, you know, the side. I thought they would sneak in. I wouldn't now. Um, I'm an adult. Yeah, no, I mean, people like will walk by and kind of be like, what's going on in there? But you know, it, it works, you know, it's, it's a casual atmosphere, uh, but it, it, it's been a lot of fun. So we, you know, we had that going and we've been operating now for over three years. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously pandemic kind of put the end to that. And then we started doing zoom shows which was okay oh my god nobody was going out at all but then you know after a month or so it just was not as fun and that's when we started doing our outdoor picnic shows and those have been you know a huge success so we're we're kind of like right now i I think we're stronger than we've ever been but at the same time we're preparing for winter when you know (laughs) who knows what's going to happen again i don't know i i wanted to um i didn't watch game of thrones because it was way too confusing, but I, I know there's that whole winter is coming thing and I can't remember the, the whatever, but- um, Yep, but you that, nailed it. <laughs> was that it? That was it? Yeah, winter, winter is coming, yeah. Damn, I'm just not sure they were calm. Maybe I, should, maybe I could have understood it, I don't know. I stopped watching <laughs> because I didn't, much like that the Hobbit. Was the hardest, that was the hardest concept to understand in the show, I felt, was that winter's coming? Yeah, what does that mean? Um, but once you get over that, you know, then it's just a lot of murder. Maybe I'm smarter than I think I am. And incest, incest too. A lot of incest too, yes. Correct. Yeah, this is true. Um, but she was hot, so I'll give her a pass. Oh. It, yeah, it's amazing that that family looked as good as they did, considering all <laughs> Right? Years. They definitely should be more troll-like. Um, but, uh, definitely glorified I, incest, that show. Yeah. Like, oh, the two hottest characters are brother and sister, and they bang. You're like, oh, maybe right. incest isn't so bad. Um, well, so um, you are, um, are not a, a female in case you didn't know, but um, Flowers yeah, yeah, in the Attic, like that was like the book that we all like, like it was, I, I wanna say my generation, cause I feel like there's 8,000 years between us and there's not. Um, but like, that was a big, <laughs> like, yeah, right. V.C. Andrews wrote Flowers in the Attic and it was a big, um, like a big book. Um, to, and anyways, it, was, it ended up being about incest. They locked a bunch of kids in the attic and lo and behold, and they made like sex and private and nudity seem really, really bad. And so when you make something seem really, really bad, the kids really want to do it. And so incest was oh. best for them too. Yeah. That's uh, all right. I hadn't read that. And uh, now no, I you won't. <laughs> nope, you will not. It is horrible to read as an adult. It's one of those, one of those books. Um, so uh, I was going to say, as someone who's super crazy and anxious about pandemic life and Corona apocalypse, um, you're doing a really good job of social distancing at these things and you restrict people to groups of six and you see, I watched your local news. Um, and, um, and you apparently drink whiskey. So I'm pro that's another point in your direction. Cause there was a bot of Jack Daniels, which no, but <laughs> you, you, I'll teach you about whiskey when we. That, that was not my whiskey. I'm a, I'm a bourbon guy. Um, I'm a rye. But- more of a scotch oh, i like a good rye. rye yeah yeah um i mean i'll drink any of it but bourbon's always been my go-to yeah i'm a mccallan girl but we moved into a nicer house and now it's i'm forbidden from buying it except for special occasions mm. but it's okay because drizzly's on my credit 
Yeah, come on, Drizzly, bring that McAllen over. Uh huh. Um, but I'm also a speed drinker, so that's you know, it's a problem. Um, you can't speed drink <laughs> quality scotch, um, or whiskey. Well, so, you can, but you know. Yeah. You're not supposed to. Don't you know what? You don't have to live by other people's rules. Whatever you rules. Speed drink your McAllen. I say do it. I know. Um, I know. The problem was like early in the pandemic when like all the women were supposed to be like baking bread and like making gourmet dinners. And I was in this mom's group where it's like 10, you know, the cool moms because my daughter's cool. I'm not, but their kids are cool. And so I'm in this group and they're like all sending pictures of their gourmet dinners. And I'm like, it's like three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm pouring myself a glass of wine. I'm like, let's see what I can find on Pinterest. Quick screenshot. Look what I made. Or I'd like take pictures of, I take their pictures and change the angle and then like, Photoshop it a little, like add meatballs and be like, I made the same thing, but with meatballs. Um, that's, yeah, I guess I'm not doing so well in the pandemic. <laughs> Who is? No one. Um, Joe, you also have a podcast. Uh, I do. I have a podcast called uh, It's a Hustle. And uh, I'll be honest, I've not been as dedicated as you. So when the pandemic stopped, I was like, eh, it just became tougher. I, you know, I was doing a lot of interviews. I do short podcast was like 15 minutes gotcha. and it was usually with comics but also other artists or performers and just kind of how they you know turn their art into a job because it's not an easy thing to do and there is uh particularly for you know comedy but i think for everything there's just like a lot of different paths you can take i think when people start they think there's one but there's a million different things and, and routes you can go so yeah i did that for uh, a little bit over a year and that, that's out there uh, so i do have some content but uh i've been i've been a little lazy uh on that joe why don't you have me as a guest talking about my first book that no one bought that uh we could do that that could be a reason to uh to jump start it again right and by the way i've been pretty crappy about mine for a while and then um uh and then i was watching as i think i told you and i've said it before um i was watching some of these comedy specials um in particular, Janelle James, who, um, do you know her? Um, I don't know her personally, but I'm a big fan. She's fantastic. I am too. And I can't, I really want an intro to her. I'm poking around. I even asked um, Amy Hawthorne, who does the, yeah. you know, and yep, Amy's I like, I, I'm sorry. I don't know her well enough to do it. I was like, damn it. So I might just balls to the wallet. Um, but um, we'll see. But I was just, I was watching her talk about 2018. I was watching Joe Rogan talk about 2016. He's like, we might end up with Trump as president. I'm like, wonder what all of these fuckers think now. And that was what um, revived me to start recording again. Um, yeah. Because I suddenly felt passionate about something. Well, that's great. I uh, it's it's good to feel passion, and it's particularly you know for a project like this. So. I'm I'm glad you're back and it's nice to be podcasting again, even if it's not, you know, my, my podcast. <laughs> but I'm inviting myself to go on your podcast. That's what it is. So yeah, and that'll work. We can we can make that happen. I, I just need to figure out and you'll probably have to give me some direction because part of the reason I didn't do it, I was like, ah, I gotta figure out how to like record on Zoom and do all that. So uh but okay. no, I I'm a tech tard. It's really simple. Um uh, and also, if you can't figure it ask, out, ask an eight-year-old to explain it to you. Because yeah, no, I I don't have an eight-year-old though. No, uh, no, but you just grab one off the street. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Um, um, in Connecticut, really? Yeah, yeah, we're we're very tight on those kidnapping laws uh, here. Yeah, not as liberal as uh, as you'd expect from a blue state. No, well, Long Island, we um, again, we don't lock our doors, so it's all. Yeah, maybe you can grab a kid for me. <laughs> I'll grab a kid for you. Um, I started teaching online at OutSchool. I was teaching like psychology to kids and making it fun. And I quickly learned that I was a moron compared to these kids. And like, I'll be like, you know, sharing something and they'll be writing like fuck all over my board. I'm like, stop. And I can tell by their face who's doing it, but I can't figure out how to stop them. And finally yesterday, someone was like, just turn off your annotations. I was like, you're cool, fine, perfect. Um, so, uh, so, so, yeah, so I've been hustling my way through this as well. So it's, it's sad to think that like I need somebody else's help for technology because I'm the person that my parents always go to for help on technology. And they're like real bad. Like we were like when we were first, you know, in this and like our only family <laughs> gatherings were like Zoom calls. For some reason, my parents would have to take like three devices 
to get onto the Zoom, they'd have one, which was like the video that was kind of like somewhat pointed at their face. They'd have one for the audio. And then there would just be some other random one that was logged in pointing at the floor. So you would see what their <laughs> floor looked like. I, uh, you know, and I'm their expert. So the fact that I would also need an expert, it's kind of dismaying. Um, if we, I know we're running out of time, but if you really want to see something, uh, Mike Birbiglia, who we both know from Georgetown, um, um, <clears throat> and Mike, you're welcome to come on the show as well. I'm sure you're dying to, um, just kidding. Um, not kidding, kidding. But, um, one of his like first albums, I guess they're called as you've informed me. Um, he talked about technology and explaining it to his parents and like, it was talking about faxes and technology because it was that long ago. And it's, it's really funny. Like I, I still have that stuck in my head. Um, because uh, he, you know, he's got this whole bit. I'm not even going to pretend to do it, but it's like about like trying to explain to his mom that like fax is like you send through the air, but where does it go? How do I get it back? And then also about how everything's starting to have a camera. Um, you know, next thing you know, that, why do I need a camera and like grapefruit and like yeah, now, the grapefruit and then you poop out the pictures. <laughs> right and now and like thinking about that shit now, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Now it's sort of even much worse um trust me you can handle it there's literally a button on zoom that says record yeah another great bit on technology is like uh you know it's like with technology advancing like you never know you know what people have you know what what's next and people are like oh have you heard of like the new sony teleporter and he's <laughs> like <laughs> and he's like yeah and he says yeah which means no but i like you yeah <laughs> <laughs> when my brother um when my brother went to college, I was like, he's four years younger than me. I was like, here's everything you need to know. If anyone ever asks you if you like a musician or band and you've never heard of them, just say, well, mostly just their early stuff and you'll sound cool <laughs> and shit. And he fucking pulled this shit. I mean, he was also a stoner and whatever, but he pulled it off. Like, he's like, yeah, that really works. I was like, it does. It does. It's funny to think that because, like, musicians, I feel like there's a lot of that. You're like, oh, I really like them then, but then they like change. Like, but with comedy, I feel like the longer you do it, the better you're getting. There's not like too many comics where I'm like, oh, they're later. You know, sometimes they have like a just something that like is unachievable. They like done a special that's like great, but you know, I don't feel like there's like that drop off or there or that feeling that there's drop off with, right. with comics that there is with musicians. Yeah, and even then, I don't always agree. I think we just, we have an, a sentimental, emotional attachment to that period of our lives with That's music. That's a good point. I'm a shrink, remember? You know? Yeah, way to pull out that psychology. I, I didn't even know, thought about I that. Know, yeah, yeah. Right. Doctor it's not the music at all. It's yeah, a, it's not. It's our no, emotional. That grilled cheese sandwich I ate at uh -huh. the time. It's our emotional <laughs> attachment, and that's why... That's what it is, but regardless, it makes you sound cool as shit if you were, like have a catalog. Of, I probably got him late a lot because of that line. Um, that, that's, that's some good work on your part. Thank you very much. Um, Joe, thank you. Um, I know um, I had to get up early to look beautiful for you, obviously. Um, and, um, and it was nice meeting you since we never actually met in Georgetown. Um, and uh, Fairfield Comedy Club is doing, um, when's, do you we're doing uh, shows every Saturday night, um, and uh, we're actually getting ready in September. We're going to be doing the Connecticut Comedy Festival, so we're going to have a bunch of shows throughout Connecticut that month. Um, so yeah, it's kind of an exciting time uh, if you're in Connecticut, I guess. <laughs> right, which is why I think you should also Zoom them and then find a way to charge people, but again, the tech issue. But I have brilliant ideas for everyone, and... Um, well, and keep them coming. I, I, I can use all the brilliant ideas I can get. I, I will. My, um, my ADD meds helps me like turn out <laughs> shit all the time. Um, and where can people, f okay, so uh, Fairfield Comedy Club is on Facebook. Um, it's also on Instagram. And um, if you want to make Joe uncomfortable, you can also find him on Instagram. I will include it in the show notes um, and in the bio. And um, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you. This was a blast. It was a uh, great chatting with you and getting to know you a little bit better. And I will work on getting my podcast up so I can have you on. You like that pressure, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what? Sometimes you just need a good kick in the pants. Yeah. Can you imagine what it's like to be married to me? It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> well, I'm already all set on that. I, uh, I've, got, <laughs> I've got my own. She's never pressuring me to podcast, though. So. 
I, I, she looks perfect. I can't think of her as a pain in the ass. She looks like a fucking Disney princess, so. Well, when you look that good, you're allowed to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> that was somehow insulting. Hashtag me too. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs>